Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of ERT. My name is Derek. And I'm Kara. And today we're gonna talk about the topic that we've always been saying that we were gonna talk about and we never have. I think this has probably been going on for a good two years now. I think this has been going on longer than and that. And we're gonna talk about child swapping, parent swapping, rider switch, rider swap, whatever the heck you wanna call it. All of those things. Yeah. It's all the same thing. And we're gonna kind of break it down. We're gonna talk about what it is, what you, how you benefit from it, and then kind of explain maybe some of the major park chains and how they are different because you will discover if you use it, it is different at a lot of properties. So I was saying, if you think you know what it is, you might not. <laughs> yeah. So depending on where you go, what is it? What is it? Okay. So, so parent swapping is, let's say there's Derek and I, and we go to an amusement park and we want to ride a big ride. And yet we have small children who are not tall enough or brave enough to ride the big ride. And so one parent will wait through the regular queue and ride the ride. And then when they get off, they will switch places with the second parent who will then usually go up the exit and then get on the ride so they don't have to wait through the queue a second time. So let's <clears throat> discuss the different chains and how this policy functions across. Uh, I mean, because they're all different. Everything and is you'll different. learn that even in some, some of the park chains, a lot of their parks have different policies, which can make it a little bit more confusing. Right, the different parks within the same chain. You would think that like a Six Flags park would be the same from Six Flags to Six Flags or SeaWorld, they're, they're not. Yeah, yes, the SeaWorld park chain is different, Cedar Fair is different, and I mean, as far as I'm aware, Six Flags is pretty constant, but let's jump into the most basic one that I think the uh, very basic everybody go, might go to would be a Disney park. I think, did Disney start? Is this like a Disney thing? Did I, Disney quite start? possibly. I was going to look that up and I one. forgot. Yeah, I, I'm not 100%, but it feels like it might have been something that started I mean, at Disney. Dis Disney was the first place that I was introduced to it because I remember my parents, parents swapping with us when we were little kids at Disney. Yeah. And Universal too, Disney and Universal both. Well, I was going to say, I've never experienced that Universal. You've done Universal? My parents have. Do you remember what that was like? Because I have no idea. So we I apologize, we don't really have much on the Universal, but Disney nonetheless. Yeah, I was gonna say, we're it's called Rider Disney. Switch, first thing. And how that one works, I think is the most convenient in the sense of it's very easy on the steps that you need to do. And it's very efficient. You just simply walk up to the ride at the queue attendant. So the person that's standing right there at the front of the entrance, there's always an employee there and you tell them that you need to do rider switch. Uh, what they will do is they will uh, scan the pass for the rider that is going to go on the second time and anybody in that party. I think they allow up to six people to join that person that second time around. So as for an example, when we were at Disney, let's say Leander didn't want to ride the roller coaster, but Le uh, Braylon did. So me and Braylon could go ride the roller coaster first, get off, and then Braylon could ride the second time with Kara. And so that's how that, that whole idea works. Right, and works. they scan your either your pass or your magic band, and that loads like a lightning lane onto your magic band. So then you just go up the lightning lane Yes. So at Disney, you technically have to wait in the line, quote unquote, twice. But so the first person, the first group that goes in, they will go through the normal line unless you're using your lightning lane. Like if you already like have the fast pass, you can do the rider switch along with that, too. So the first group would go up the lightning lane and then the second group would go up the lightning lane. But if you're doing the regular, the first group would go up the regular line. And then once you get off, the second group gets to go up the lightning lane. So there is a little bit of a wait, but it's not much. It's not much. But it's very simple. You know what you do because there's certain parks you go to it as you as we'll get to it and get very chaotic. I but, say the nice thing about Disney is at most, I would say all of the major attractions, it is very clearly marked where you go in order to do the rider switch. Yeah, there's they usually have, like a ride off that has like a sign on them or something. Say, yeah, they have like a person and they have like a table and they have a sign that says like rider switch here. Cast and so, member, I'm sorry. Cast it's member, cast yeah, how dare you? Disney. How yes. dare you? Um, and so it's very, very easy and it's, it's very clear where you go and what you do. So speaking of not clear, let's <laughs> talk about Cedar Fair. Because every single one of their parks is different and actually some of the rides inside the park have different policies than the other rides. So <laughs> looking at your Cedar Point. Yes, yeah, Cedar Point is the worst. Cedar Point has like 
15,000 different rules for every run. For every run. But, so by and large, Cedar Fair, you will need to go to the uh, guest services once you enter the park and you're gonna get a parent swap card. It's just a piece of paper that has a list of all the roller coasters or ride attractions. You just simply are gonna put your name on the top and the, how many people are in your group. That's really all, all mm -hmm. you do with that. And you need that card when you go to the to the rides to initiate the rider swap. So let's start with Kings Island. Oh, so let's just say like in Kings general. Kings Island I think is the most efficient because the rules are across the board are the same at Kings Island. You go to the park, you go, you don't go to guest services at Kings <laughs> Island. So now we're already getting confused. You go over to the, the section where you check your the height. I don't remember what it's called. It's just like, there's uh, like a little booth off to the left as soon as you walk into the park and they will check kids' heights and give them wristbands for like 46 inches or 48 inches. So yeah, instead of going, uh, you can still get that if you really want to, but you're going to go up there and say that you, you're you going to be doing parent swap and they'll give you the card. It's Sometimes a piece of paper. It's not really a card. Yeah, so they'll give you the piece of paper. And then so what you're going to do is you're going to go to whatever roller coaster. doesn't really matter. Your first group is going to go in the traditional line. Your second group doesn't have to wait at the exit, but depending if you can take your cell phone, which I think pretty much every single roller coaster at Kings Island, you can have your cell phone on you as long as you have it like secured. Anyways, That's yeah, the first trail. group will go like, for example, Orion, I will go on because as of this last year, only me and Kara can ride that roller coaster. So I would go through the queue. And then as soon as I would get off, I would hand my slip of paper that I had for that rider swap and I would hand it to the ride op who is at the exit of that attraction. They're usually standing around kind of walking back and forth on the platform. If you don't get their attention, don't worry, just stand there at the ride exit outside of where you're not like actually in the station, but you gotta stand just outside of that gate. They'll come up to you and they'll ask you what you're doing there and you just hand them the slip. And then once you hand them the slip, you can simply walk down the exit and then your other, uh, whoever's gonna be riding next will walk right up the steps. And then you will tell that person, hey, I'm in that party, Abby. And then when they're ready, they'll let you on to the ride. Sometimes you have to wait a train or two, but it just all depends. King at Cedar Point, they have the same paper slip you have to get, but you go to guest services. But if you do forget, which nine out of the 10 times we go to Cedar <laughs> Point, we always forget to get it at the guest service at the front of the park. And we're heading all the way to the back and we're like by Millennium Force. And we're like, crap, we never got this paper. <laughs> Thankfully, the ride attendant there at the entrance for Millennium Force always has that slip of paper typically. and they'll fill it out. I don't know if you can say always. They uh, well, they have always had it that we've been there. Uh, we've gone to other rides and sometimes it's been hit or miss. The Millennium Force staff, always ha they're always prepared. They always have the material. So if you do forget it, I'm going to bet that they'll have it there. Hopefully. So nonetheless, you still need that same slip of paper. In most of the rides, it kind of functions the same. The first group rides the ride gets off, you hand that slip to the ride attendant, and then the other group walks right up the exit, and then they hop on where the ride attendant says they can get on. The only one that's different would be Steel Vengeance. Steel Vengeance, I do not have to hand any slip to any ride attendant. You simply go and ride the ride, and then once you get off, there is a little booth right <laughs> next to the photo section. Mm -hmm. They have like a little umbrella, you walk up to them and you say you're doing parent swap. You hand them the card. They will then wand the group that's going to walk up next. And then they'll have them kind of stay off to the side until they're ready. And then they'll let them walk up the exit. It's a little, I don't know. I've never actually done the parent swap. I've always been I mean, on the ride first. The reason that they do that is because if you go through the regular queue. You have to go through the metal detector. You detectors. go through a metal detector. And so obviously if you're walking up the exit, you're skipping the metal yeah, they detector. Can't, they're not just going to check you up there at the top of the uh, at the station. So, so they do wand the second parent at the bottom. They say like, make sure you don't have anything in your pockets. And then they use the little wand. You go up the stairs and you tell the ride attendant who's standing there at the gate that you're parent swapping. And they usually want to check the card to make sure it's been signed off on. And then they usually will wand you again. They usually they'll ask. Oh, they wand you up at the top yes, too? Yes, usually oh. they wand you again. Like so you don't I have anything in your pockets, twice. right? No, not anything in my pockets. Yes. And then they'll wand you again, just for sure. In, now the other thing with parent swap, it's a little bit different at most of the Cedar uh, Fair parks, but sometimes the ride off will actually will let you take your request to where you want to sit, correct? Sometimes, yes. <clears throat> um, usually, I would say the rides that I think are most consistent to ask, like, where do you want to sit? I feel like Orion. Kings Island. Kings Island. Cedar Point. 
Cedar is Point is different? pretty much you get what you get. Well, okay. The one option is, so like I said, it's a little bit different. On Millennium Force, you basically, have, you don't actually get right onto the ride. You go, you don't walk up the exit. You do walk up the exit, but you hop back into the queue and you still have to go inside the station. So then well, you right, can take wherever you want to Well, right, because Millennium Force has a, the unloading yes, station. Yes, they, they have the unloading and loading station. So you walk so. up the exit and then they open the little door and you join the regular queue. So yes. then you can sit wherever you want to sit. So that one, again, like I said, different. Now, there are some Cedar Fair parks that do not use the parent swap card. As an example, King's Dominion does not. Carowinds, I went and asked them, but I don't recall them ever having it. Do you remember I them having rem the slip? I feel like we had the slip one time and, and then, then the, the other time, time we didn't. they didn't. It was like they had it in 2021 and then 2022, they were like, we don't know what that is. Yeah, I, so, that's what I feel like. Yeah, it's if you never know, it's just, it doesn't hurt to go just talk to guest services. I usually try to get to the park early anyway, so I can talk to guest services if I feel I need to. Knott's Berry Farm, I don't. They didn't have any slip at all there, if I recall, right? No. No. Neither does Dorney, right? And Dorney does not either. So, like I said, I. So then, in that, in those situations where you don't actually have the paper, it's just kind of like a free for all. You just. Yes. Usually Derek will tell the ride attendant when he's getting off that he is going to be swapping yep. just to kind of let them know, heads up, somebody's going to be walking up the exit. And then I have to walk up the exit and I have to flag somebody down. <laughs> now, it has gotten a lot better. We started parent swapping back in 2017. And that first year, I felt like it was complete chaos. Uh, you would have a write off that say, oh yeah, we'll do the parent swap. And then that write off goes on like break or something in the middle of it. And then the other person was like, I don't know who you are. But after that, it's been, I think it's actually been pretty smooth. Most of the staff know what's going on. They understand the rules, but nonetheless it's been pretty smooth. I say, the write offs seem to actually know and be aware of what parent swapping is. Like when we first started doing it, we felt like we had to explain to the write offs yes. what we were doing. You're doing what? Parent swapping? What yeah. the heck is that? Why do you think you can just walk up the exit and get on this ride? Now it seems to be going a lot better. Yeah. So let's jump over to what actually is my favorite when it comes to the parent swap is the Bush Garden Sea World chain. So let's okay. start off at, because again, each park is different. Every <laughs> single Sea World Orlando, Bush Gardens Tampa, and Bush Gardens Williamsburg all have different process of how they do the parent swap. <laughs> My least favorite is Williamsburg, but we'll get that. Let's start off with Orlando. Orlando is, I think it's the simplest if you know what you're doing. You, all you, know you do is you walk through the normal ride. You're just, whoever's going to ride the roller coaster first or just simply get into the line. You don't have to talk to anybody. Once you get off the ride, you just simply go and ask the ride staff right there, say, can I have a parent swap card? And they will hand you a skip the line that actually says parent swap on it. And then the other group can just walk right up the skip the line. And mm -hmm. I think the same thing, I think it allows up to six people in the party. But again, it's always just us four. So it's usually if anything, it's you know, Karen Braylon or yeah. me and Braylon, something like that. Yeah. But nonetheless, it's very simple. And the nice thing, because it's the card, you don't have to worry about like, oh, I'm waiting in the exit. I got to get up there right away. No, you can go back on that ride whenever you want to. In fact, we've done that. Like I rode, I think it was Surf Coaster and it's, we had to go somewhere else because like the kids needed food or something. We didn't come back to the ride for like three hours. We still had the parents swap. She just walked right on. So SeaWorld Orlando, fantastic. Bush Gardens Tampa, even better when it works. <laughs> when it works. The, well, the first year I feel oh like that gosh. was a hiccup and we'll get to that. But uh, since that, it's actually been very good. So at Bush Gardens Tampa, nobody waits in the normal queue. Everybody goes up the skip the line. So how it works is you, let's say you walk up to Iron Guazi and it says that there was a 45 minute wait. They will hand you, you're gonna talk to the ride op right there at the entrance of the ride tell them that you need to do parent swap. They will give you a card that will say, come back in 45 minutes or any time after. So when you come back, the first group will walk right up the, the quick queue. And then once they get off, your second group will walk right up the quick queue. And you, like I said, you have the card, the write off will check it the first time and then they'll check it again. Most of the time they, even if they mess it up, they don't really seem to care. It usually works pretty good. So yes, both parties do not have to wait in line. And I think it's amazing because there are some times where, like I said, 45 minutes, we both don't have to wait in line, means that we can go take the kids and go do something with them together. Mm -hmm. We can go either ride a ride or we can go get some food or whatnot, and then we just come back and we ride the roller coaster. Fantastic. That is, hands down, Bush Gardens Tampa is my favorite 
parent swap across the whole board. However, when it works. When it works. the first year that we went, they had, it was, if the ride queue was shorter than 30 minutes, they didn't honor the quick queue. They said everybody had to just go through the normal line. Well, the problem was, I think it was Montu. It was Montu. And the wait was like 25 minutes, which, I mean, it's a little petty, but nonetheless, I could wait through the line. We just didn't really have the time for Kara to wait in the line because it was a very hot day. It was like in the 90s. Kids are grumpy. Obviously, this is 2021. People were still wearing masks. So it just made it even kind of more miserable. So you didn't get the ride of that year because I, I went through it me. and we're like, she was like, I don't want to wait in this line again. We just, well, right, the kid's we, been standing here now He for waited 25 minutes. minutes. I wasn't going to wait an additional 25 yeah. minutes. But that was the only ride that we had the problem. The rest of the park, you just did it and it worked out well. So, but ever since then, it's never been the problem really. And I think it's always been efficient. Smooth. Yeah. Really good. Now, okay, I said Bush Gardens, Tampa, Bush Gardens, Orlando. Sea Bush World. Gardens. SeaWorld Orlando. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> SeaWorld Orlando. Yeah, Bush Gardens Orlando. <laughs> right. Like, where, yes. where are you going? Anyway. Yeah, who knows? It's, it's a new park. It's, you got to know where it is. It's a secret. <laughs> so, Orlando's Bush Gardens it. Williamsburg. They are different than the others. So, that <laughs> one, you don't have to talk to any ride op other than the, the first group. They just walk through the queue. And when they get off, you don't have to communicate to any staff. The people that are going to do the parent swap have to walk up to, there's usually a person standing at the exit and tell them we're doing parent swap and then they'll get you on the ride. So it is nice that you don't have to annoy the ride staff. There's no papers. Yes, because that that is one of the most annoying things about parent swap with some of these is like you got to annoy the ride staff when they're going off the ride. They're obviously super busy. They're checking a bunch of things. They're trying to get the trains out, out the station. So... At least in that aspect, when you walk up the exit, you're already ready to go. You just talk to the person at the bottom. They tell you that you're going to be getting on at what time, and then you just walk right up. Yeah. But there is no card. There is nothing else there. But so in that sense, it's uh, you don't have to really worry about it. But I, I don't know if you could just come back. I, I think they have to see me get off the ride first, if I recall, and then they'll let you go up after they saw that I was off the ride. As versus like Orlando, they just have you a card and like just come back whenever you want to come back. Well, so right, and hand them the you card. You do kind of have to at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. Those who are waiting kind of have to stay around the area, getting ready to get on the ride. You can't. So if it's like a forty-five minute line, you might be able to get away and do something and come back, but you might miss them. So it gets a little challenging. There is there is a little there is an art to it of making sure you're communicating with each other <laughs> how far they're going. The line. Usually, what I do is I'll text Kara when I'm like. Hey, it's. I, it looks like I'm about three trains away from getting on something right, like that. Right. Yeah. So then that way we at least have a heads up. And let's move on to my least favorite. Not to say because they're my least favorite properties, because I really enjoy these two parks, but they were my least favorite when it came to their policies, how it functioned, because it was just felt awkward. And that's going to be Dollywood and Silver Dollar City. Which doesn't make any sense because I feel like Dollywood they're and Silver Dollar... such a family Dollar, park. Yeah, they're yeah. family parks. So I feel like parent swapping here should be so easy. So and it's every just ride not. has a slightly different version of mm -hmm. it. There is no... You don't have to get any parent swap card or anything anywhere. All you do is you walk up to... Every ride is different. But you got to talk to the ride attendant at the entrance of the ride to find out what exactly you got to do. So, for example, their new roller coaster, Big Bear Mountain... If you're going to do a parent swap, everybody must go through that queue. If you have an infant Together. to 95-year-old grandma or whatever, everybody has to walk through that queue. Mm -hmm. So Lander wasn't going to ride, so he had to wait the whole queue. Thankfully, it wasn't that long of a wait. Yeah, we moved but, pretty good. Yeah, once you get up into the station, and this is where it got really awkward as you're Very both weird. there, is the first party got on, and then they got off. And then the second party, we had to like toss Lander across. <laughs> And then they could, then Kara and Braylon could ride. So they did let Braylon ride twice, which was nice. At Dollywood, and Dollywood. We'll get to Silver Dollar City at in a Dollywood, second. At Dollywood, they will let a partner ride with the swapping parent. Yes. The only stipulation is you cannot ride back-to-back -back trains. Yes, you have to, what was it, one train You have to wait something? one train in between. Which, which again, was... made it even more weird on Big Bear Mountain because they're, you're literally standing in the in the, the queue there yeah. for the row. So they got to let somebody else kind of come in and get in front of you and get on. It, it Like I said, it was just really messy. It's up to the write-up to remember that they need to put somebody <laughs> yes. in the queue in front of you. So literally, we stood there. Nobody was there. 
And they sent the train with an empty row because we couldn't ride it twice <laughs> yeah. in a row. And we were like, this is so dumb. It Let's just put really us hilarious. on and let us ride and get us out of here. But whatever. now the other rides, which well, I say they're really on there. We rode a couple other coasters that we did the parent swap. We only did it on Wild Eagle mm -hmm. and Lightning Rod. Wild Eagle, you everybody walks into the queue. But those who are going to wait, they have a parent waiting section. It's just like it's. It's underneath the station, it's in the shade, and there's benches, and you can just sit there, and there's enough space that your kid can even run around or whatnot there. Yeah, Lightning Rod is the same way. In Lightning Rod was the same exact way. They have a, a spot where you can sit down, they have a bench, and you just kind of, the kids can sort of just hang out there. It's it's not mm -hmm. as, it's not as open it's as It's not as roomy. Wild. Yeah, but it's yeah. just more of a bench there. But nonetheless, it's the same process of what it does. So all of you wait in the queue until you get to that spot, and then the one group waits, and then when you get off, you have to work your way down. There's a little... When you get off the ride, there's usually a pathway that says this way to the parent swap or something. On Wild Eagle, there's one. And you just walk right up and then the other group just walks right into the queue. So not as convenient. Again, it's really not about, I don't want to say convenience. It's more about the confusion is where I think it just kind of gets into mm -hmm. play. Because then the rest of the rides, like, we didn't have to do it on Thunderhead because it was practically a walk-on anyways. But yeah. yeah, the one that I just thought was weird was Big Bear Mountain. Now... Silver Dollar City. Oh my goodness, that was confusing. And again, I just want to follow the rules. I'm going to be a rule follower. I'm here to respect the park and everything that's going on. So we had a little issue when we rode a powder keg. Right, that was the so first coast to we run. We were there with, it, it was our whole family, plus we had your mother and mm -hmm. your sister. So they are with us. And so we decided that first was going to ride was going to be me, your mom, and your sister. And you were hanging out with the kids. Well, we got to the certain spot in the line where you talk to the to the right op. It's pretty close to the station. And we told them that we we're doing the parent swap. And we were trying to get a little bit more information out of it. And he told us that the second group, nobody can ride with that second person or whoever. Basically, if you rode one time, you cannot ride the second time. So if that person, that person that's waiting is by themselves, they are going to be riding by themselves. So I said, okay. I was like, well you know, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law here in line. I said, can I, I'll just go wait with Kara and then we'll both ride together then. He's like, okay. So I get off and then we, once they got off the ride, we walk up. It was just like this big whole issue. And the guy's like, well, technically you got out of line. I really shouldn't have let you get back. And I'm like, well, I'm doing what you kind of said. But nonetheless, it was just really, I felt like you had to keep constantly explaining what was going on. And it the was- The main issue was that we didn't get to talk to a ride up at the beginning of the line. No, you had there was to wait no one, 20 minutes to the queue. There until was you could no talk one standing there to like check heights or anything like that. So we just assumed, well, I mean, it's probably like Dollywood. So we'll yeah. just kind of figure that it's like Dollywood's policy and it's just not. Yeah, it was just very, yeah, it was just felt very, very chaotic, which. Kind of like how Knobles was. We had to use oh. the parent swap. <laughs> and was... we like to call the one guy. He was he was like crazy military strict or whatever. He was like, if I can't see you like right there standing in that one box, they were like five feet off to the left or whatever. They're not getting on the ride. And it was like, we're like, OK, I mean, it wasn't that long of a wait anyways. But we were just like because we had my brother's family was there, too. So we had all these bunch of even like two year olds, three year olds, four year olds. So it was, but <laughs> it was, it, we got yelled at and we yeah. were like, why are you that yelling was the only at ride us? In the park that had a line anyways, really was for Phoenix. <laughs> like calm down, but, sir. Yeah. <laughs> just want to ride the ride. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, no Silver Dollar City. So after that, I just, it kind of just was like, okay, whatever. I mean, the other rides weren't too bad when it came to the, uh, to the parent swap issue. And then we just knew from there on out that. Since we had a bigger group, we knew that, well, whoever is going to ride second, just we'll make sure we have a pair there. And that's how we pretty right. much did it. Because Silver Dollar City would not let a person ride twice. No. And they wouldn't let you ride, even if you were right there at the exit, they would not let you ride back to back. Yes. And I understand the reason why some parks don't want to let people ride twice. Because depending on the, the style of train, like, for example, some of them doesn't make any sense. Like if you're a single rider and the train only has like two person per row, that other seat nine out of the 10 time is going to be sitting vacant. Right. It's so empty. So why not let somebody else sit there and ride with them? As versus some others where it's, you know, like a four cross or something like that, they're going to fit more people in there. So if you have a people, you know, other groups that are just like, no, we're. So, I mean, I get it. Again, really what it comes down to is just re be respectful of the parks mm -hmm. and the rules and regulations. We're not here trying to take advantage. 
We're just trying to do what is allowed. I mean, really hear what's offered to us to handle. I mean, because you really need this parent swap policy because if not, there's no way there are some parks that we would be able to, both of us mm -hmm. be able to ride the roller coasters. There's just no way unless we go and buy the Fast Lane Plus, which we have done that just because even with a parent swap, sometimes it just takes too long because mm -hmm. even though they can get the walk up the exit, you're still waiting longer because sometimes you walk up and then five, 10 minutes later, you get on the ride because of mm -hmm. other issues or the ride breaks down and you're just kind of standing around, which has happened, it's I think, happened. on Millennium Force. I feel like and Millennium Force on is steel, always the issue. It's happened on Steel Vengeance, And too. Steel Vengeance, yes, that <laughs> seems to be Kara's sore <laughs> spot there. It's happened on Iron Gwazi, too, with inclement weather that uh, I've missed getting my ride because... And then I missed out on Lightning Rod And then, yes, you missed out on Lightning Rod. The roller coaster rod. rolled out of this train. I mean, yeah, rolled out of the train. Rolled out of the station, <laughs> and then it stalled going up the launch lift, and it... And then it was the park was closed technically by then. It was like seven. It was like seven oh five. And they were actually saying they were going to they if if they wanted to wait because they said well, whoever's in the station will get the ride. They said they might get it up and running like 40 minutes. But I was like, I wrote it already that day. And I was like, I'm not going to make the kids stand around not for 40 job. minutes. And that's just part of being obviously being a parent. You got to there's more than just me there. So. So, yeah, very happy about the parent swap policy, how it works. Please. Do not disrespect the policy and, I don't know what I would say, take it for granted. Take advantage uh, of take it. Take advantage of it is really what I'm looking for, yes. Yeah. So the best thing to do if you know you're going to a park, especially if you've never been there before, is most parks do have their parent swap policy listed on their website. So you can just hop on their website before <clears throat> you're going to the park and you can read what their policy is. If you forget, you can always just stop into guest relations and they should be able to give you a quick rundown of what their policy is. So that way you're a little bit educated and you're not just walking up to a ride and yeah. trying to figure it out on the fly. There is one other park that we do need to talk about with a ride swap. Our home park, Kennywood. Oh. <laughs> Kennywood is actually very simple and is it my favorite? I don't know I'd say it was my favorite because I just really like the whole like the skip the line option at, at Bush Gardens Tampa. But at Kennywood, it's very simple. So let's say if me and Braylon are going to ride first and Kara's going to ride second. We go on to Phantom's Revenge. We walk through the normal queue. I will hop off the ride and Braylon can just sit right there in the seat. The ride op even knows because you've already talked to them. The ride, the ride ops there at Kennywood are very friendly. I just hop off. I walk right through the exit and Kara walks right up and then the same train and you roll right out of the station. Pretty much. And that's that's on every single one of the roller coasters there. Like usually if Braylon is going to ride twice, she never even has to get out of her seat. She just stays. Yep. So, yeah. Which gets Very simple slightly there. awkward when there are people like obviously waiting for that row. They and usually, it's like, They oh, usually hi. will tell people like, oh, hey, there's rider swap happening right now. But which is why I say... Don't take advantage of the system. Don't be like, oh, yeah, we got kids over here. We're trying to figure out a way to skip the line. That's not what it's meant for. It's meant for those who you have kids or whatever. You just can't wait in the line the whole time. So be respectful. Well, you don't want to wait through the line twice. You don't want to wait for the line twice. That's yes. One other thing I have noticed this year, it's just something to kind of be aware of. I, I don't know what it was, but especially at Cedar Point this past year, I, there was a lot of people that had like the medical cards. Oh, yes. And like I said, you go up the same line and I'm not here to judge anybody. I, I truly, honestly, if, if you are allowed to do whatever you can do, great. Same thing as I'll say about the parent swap policy. Do not just try to take advantage trying to think that you, you know, you you beat the system and got your own like fast lane plus or something. It's not what it's there for. It's there for the people that truly need it. And because I will be honest, when we were standing there by Steel Vengeance, there were people that were truly taking advantage of the situation. So. Well, right. The, the line. OK, so it's Steel Vengeance. You have the little station that you yeah, have to walk there. up to at the base of the exit. And there should never be a line there. There was like a 15 minute line there just and to talk the to the line them. went way down the path. And it was like, there should not be a line here. This is just for people doing parent swap and the random medical card people. Yeah. Yeah. Why are there a hundred people in line for this? this yeah, it is was kind like of everybody crazy. was trying to find a way to, to work the system there. And it's disappointing nonetheless, but I didn't. I mean, maybe we just, Cedar maybe Point. every single person who had the medical card thing just was all together and we just time. all walked up to Steven. I, I think some of them were parents swaps too i wasn't really sure but i don't know if like 
I guess we're talking about too. I don't know. Has there been a secret reel or short or TikTok video that rolled around here recently? <laughs> we're talking about how you can skip the line to just tell them that your parents swapping or something. I, don't I know, mean, maybe. Please be respectful. We've and talked to a lot of people who have children and go to parks and have no it. clue what parent swapping don't even know is. It exists. Have yeah. no idea. And we've been like, wait, how do you you go to parks and you just skip riding rides? And they're like, well, yeah, because I don't want to wait through another hour long line after he does. And I'm like, oh my goodness, let me explain to you the beauty of the parent swap. Yeah, you can ride too. But. We can mention we can mention that even though we have never parent swapped at Universal. Okay. Because yes. when we went to Universal, we left our children at home. <laughs> I'm assuming it works very similar to Disney. I I believe it works very similar to Disney and Universal does have rooms. Like I don't know if uh, you remember yes, Veloci at Velocicoaster Coaster and at Hagrid's. Yes. There are dedicated rooms where people can wait with their children when they're doing a parent swap. Yeah, it's going to be more or less the same. You're going to walk up to the ride attendant at the entrance of the ride and tell them what you're doing. Like I think on Veloci Coaster, there's like three or four queues on that ride, and if you're doing the parent swap. I think the one group goes right up into that waiting room that you were talking about. I'm not exactly we're sure. We're not sure. I don't know don't if they also use that. like, they give you the fast pass to come back at some point. I don't know. We don't know. We have never done it. But there is rooms. There are rooms at Universal yes. for parents to wait. And, and there, they well, swap there's even and waiting rooms, even Velocicoaster, which is very nice. Same kind of topic on the parent swap. Let's say you have a bag with you that... Me and Kara, let's say she has a bag that's just too big and she one of us have to hold it. It doesn't fit in the locker. She can wait in the waiting room. I would ride the roller coaster and as soon as I get off, I would grab her bag and she can walk right up. So that they have that waiting room there for multiple reasons. So, yeah, which is I mean, that's what I like about Universal. Very accommodating on that. I was going to say, because Universal and Disney are both very accommodating yes. for families. It's Orlando. They're obvious. Most parks there in Orlando, like I said, even SeaWorld, always very accommodating. They know their audience. Exactly. Well, I mean, that's pretty much all we have today. I hope this was very informative on the whole parent swap, rider swap, rider switch, whatever you want to call it, child swap. I don't know, do you have anything more to add? Nope, I think that's about it. All right. Well, thanks for watching. This is X Scream Thrills. Let us know in the comments below if you have additional questions and we can- We won't answer them. We will do our best to answer them. <laughs>